Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, Cambridge Educated Mathematician and x -step Marker. If you're thinking of applying for maths at Cambridge or Oxford, maybe consider subscribing as I'll be bringing out new content that's based on the application process as well as the exam prep. But this will be useful for any maths course. If you're thinking about studying maths at Oxbridge and you're not sure about what to actually apply for, whether it's straight maths, whether it's maths with statistics, maths with physics, maths with computer science, or even the more unlikely maths with philosophy, this video is for you. Today I'm going to be breaking down the differences between these courses, what you'll learn, how you'll be assessed, and what the future might look for you in terms of your career, whether that be in academia or in the industry at large. As a note, I'm going to be coming about this from a very maths perspective. I don't have much of a formal education in computer science and even less so in philosophy. Generally, I'm more of an applied mathematician, not so much of a purist. So let's get straight into it with the maths course. So looking at the mathematical tripos, it's known for its breadth of topics as well as the depth it goes into with the specific topics you take. It's known for its difficulty and rigorous framework for mathematics. Now looking at some of the courses you'll be taking, they should be on screen now, I'm going to highlight the ones that I took, noting that in the first year you have to take all of them. For this maths course, most of your assessments will be maths papers. The only difference is that beyond the first year, you'll do some computer projects known as the CATAN projects, which are coding, but very mathematical focused. So that'll be done in MATLAB most likely. In the fourth year, you'll also be given the option to complete an essay based on a current research topic, which is posed by research experts. Now for Oxford, the course is very similar. It delves into a wide breadth of topics in all of pure maths, applied maths and statistics. Um, again, a list of the topics that you can take should be on screen now. You can pause if you want to have a look through them and decide whether you'd want to take some of these courses. Okay, so now looking at what job opportunities are available for you after completing the maths degree. Well, as I know, a maths degree is quite a broad topic. Lots of different employers will want to employ you with a maths degree. But as a more general look, what do maths graduates tend to go into? Well, they tend to go into, most notably, research. So that's normally staying on at their university doing research, finance, technology, or something more like data science. These are all really useful to have those maths skills. Now, moving on to the Maths with Stats course, Cambridge doesn't actually offer a Maths with Statistics course. They believe that because there is so many different options in the second year and third year and even fourth year of the Maths tripos, if you want to specialise in statistics, you can just do that within the Maths course itself by choosing the correct options. So they don't actually offer a specific course. At Oxford, they do actually offer a Maths with Statistics course. It's very similar to the Maths course. In fact, they're identical in the first year. You take the exact same courses. The only difference is when you get to the second year, first term, you have to decide whether you want to continue on the Maths course or the Maths with Statistics course. And at that point, the only difference is that you get a few opportunities to take courses that normal math students wouldn't. They're only available to the Maths with Stats students. There's another difference is that you have to take some compulsory courses, generally based in stats, because you're taking a Maths with Stats course, makes sense. Okay, so in my opinion, there is no real need for a Maths with Stats course. There is enough opportunity within the Maths course itself to take a load of statistics modules. The only reason I can see that you would take the Maths with Stats course is that you were desperately wanting to do just complete stats, stats all the way through, and you wanted those courses that are only available to you, you want to take them, therefore you would take that Maths with Stats option. I believe this is why Cambridge doesn't actually offer it. They just allow anybody to take any course that they want in terms of maths or maths with stats. Okay, so what career opportunities do maths with stats students generally go down? Again, maths with stats is very applicable to most jobs, but we're just having a look at what do maths with stats students lean towards. Well, it's normally something to do with data science, data analytics, or actuarial scientists, quant finance, or generally anything that requires statistical modelling or probability, which is a lot of jobs nowadays, especially with the big rise in data science. Okay, so now moving on, having a look at the Maths with Computer Science course. Again, Cambridge doesn't actually offer a Maths with Computer Science course. They instead just offer the straight Computer Science course, which does have a few Maths modules in it. Um, and similarly, the Maths course does have a few computer-ish courses within it. So Oxford, does actually have a specific maths with computer science course. They generally take a 50-50 approach to this, where you're doing about 50% maths and 50% computer science. Now this does vary depending on what you specifically choose, but it's normally around that percentage. Now, when we look at the maths side, there is a greater emphasis on pure maths, 
where you're looking at more of the optimization and the logic, whereas there's a lot less to pretty much know statistics or applied mathematics. They cover topics like programming, algorithms, and logic and complexity. Beyond the first year, there's a lot more flexibility. Uh, there's only a few mandatory courses, both from maths and computer science, but beyond that, you're free to choose the remaining courses from either. So you could start in 50-50 computer science, but then slowly merge out into maths or do the opposite, go 50-50 maths, and then merge into the computer science. Again, hopefully on screen, you should be able to see some of the courses available to you. I'm not an exhaustive list and it's subject to change, but this is generally a good idea about what you could take. Now, my opinions on this course is it's a really good course. It covers both disciplines, so you get a good idea of math and you get a good idea of computer science. It also allows you, if you're not sure which, to kind of do a bit of both and then specialise into one or the other. It also gives you a lot more practical skills and helps with future career prospects, especially with, again, data science on the rise and programming in the big industry. However, it does come with some potential risks. You are doing only 50% of the maths course and only 50% of the computer science course. You are missing out on a lot. So that will mean you've got a missing gaps in your knowledge, which might mean further down the line, you can't choose some courses, even though they're technically available to you, you don't have the background to be able to actually do those courses. So it might be a bit more of a struggle later on. You might either need to try and catch up or you might just have to sacrifice some modules that you wanted to do but can't. So again, looking at the career opportunities, can do pretty much anything, especially with computer science background. Nowadays, computer science is very much wanted, but in general, students lean towards software developer, um, more recently, AI or machine learning, cybersecurity, tech startups or robotics, AR, VR developers, stuff like that. Okay, now on to the Maths with Physics course. At Cambridge, they do actually offer a Maths with Physics course, which is strange, I know, because they don't offer much else, um, but it might not quite be what you expect. They've always got to put a bit of a twist on it. So in your first year, you do 50-50. You get to do about 50% of the Maths course and 50% of the Physics course, which is from the Natural Science courses, which also includes some of the practicals. However, this is where it ends. You come to the end of the first year and then you've got to make a decision. Do you continue with Maths or do you continue with Physics? You can't keep doing both, you have to choose. In my opinion, this is quite a good course. If you're a bit unsure about what you want to take, it allows you to try both. You have to try both and see what's best for you and then specialise into one or the other. However, it's got a bit of an issue still, similarly to math computer science. You're going to miss out on all of the pure side of mathematics if you wanted to go into the math side. And I assume you're going to be missing out on some of the physics side on that side. But in terms of the maths, you're going to be missing out on all the pure, which, so if you do end up specialising into maths, you're going to limit what you can take in the following years because you're going to be a bit struggling with the pure courses. I did have one friend who did this course and what he did essentially was also go to the pure courses. So he was doing a kind of like a degree and a half because he was doing the applied courses and the pure courses. And then in the second year, he chose to go into maths because he essentially exhausted himself in the first year. He was able to go into the pure side and he ended up being more of a pure mathematician than applied, which is quite unlikely and a bit strange, but that's what he enjoyed doing. Now, Oxford doesn't actually have a Maths with Physics undergraduate course. However, instead, both Oxford and Cambridge offer a Maths with physics -y kind of fourth year programme, which is what you can specialise into. So you can do the, the Maths undergrad and then specialise into the physics -y fourth year. So that would be the Masters. For Oxford, this is known as Maths with Theoretical... Ah, can't speak. This is known as Maths with Theoretical Physics. And at Cambridge, it's known as the Astrophysics course. Um, I don't know much about the Oxford one, but the Cambridge one, it essentially, it allows you to take a certain number from the maths course, how, whatever you wish to take, along with a certain number from the astrophysics course. So it still allows you to do some of each, so it's kind of like a 50-50 again. Okay, so again, career opportunities. You're taking more of an applied side, so generally if you're going down the physics route, you're taking the more applied modules, more the more physics modules in the maths course. This means that you'll be able to go into more of the engineering, defence or space, astrophysics modeler, climate, or even something along the lines of F1. F1 are always wanting um, mathematicians in that applied sense to look at the aerodynamics of the F1 cars. Okay, so now on to a bit more of a rogue option. The Maths with Philosophy course. Cambridge doesn't offer this. 
It's only Oxford that actually offer this. While most universities do treat maths and philosophy as quite different, there has been a bit of a history in a lot of mathematicians also being philosophers. Oxford have chose to offer this programme where you again do a bit more of a 50-50 between the two. And in this course, you're generally emphasizing more on the statistics, probability, and modeling side. And on the philosophy side, you're doing analytical reasoning, metaphysics, or anything that's kind of like the philosophy of mathematics. Now, I'm not super well versed in philosophy. I've got no background in it whatsoever. Um, so I'll link the pages in the description below so you can have a look for yourself and see what you think. Put on screen a quick look at the courses that you can take while at Oxford and you can see there's quite a lot of flexibility on the philosophy side but you do still get to do some really pure and interesting mathematics. So again with this course not doing much applied you're doing more of the pure side of mathematics. Similarly as the years progress you can choose to more focus on the math side or the philosophy side and then in the final year you can either choose to do your dissertation on uh, maths or philosophy. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you progress into. Now, in my opinion, this is a very interesting course. It gives you a very unique perspective on maths because you're coming from it from a completely different viewpoint, you're looking at the ethics of it. And it's going to give you a very unique qualification that when you go to employers, they're going to be a little bit interested in because it's quite a bit different. And for certain job opportunities, it's going to be very desired. However, when you're actually applying for this, you're going to need a very specific interest in both. I don't know very many people who have a strong interest in both mathematics and philosophy, not at an age where they're going into university. So what I would say is that if you are applying for this course, you've got to have a strong interest in both. It does also come with some downsides, very similar to the other courses that I've talked about. You're doing 50-50, so you're gonna be missing out on some maths, you're gonna be missing out on some philosophy. So you're gonna to have to essentially sacrifice some courses later on. So I'm not too well versed in what career opportunities will be available for you with maths and philosophy. Again, I don't see it to be very much different from just the maths course. But on top of that, you might be able to go into some like law policy. Tech ethics is a new industry coming up, especially with AI being so popular nowadays. So a lot of tech companies might be looking for the ethics of AI. OK, so now looking at what kind of grades you will need to get into some of these courses. Generally, they're all the same. Both Cambridge and Oxford, pretty similar grade boundaries, and they don't really split up each of these separate courses. So what you'll generally need is two A stars and an A, with your A stars being in maths and further maths. For Cambridge, you'll also need to do step two and step three, and your offer might vary a little bit from college to college, but in general, you're gonna need a one in step two and step three. And there might be a bit more lenient on that, depending on the course, but I, I assume that's gonna be somewhere around that. For Oxford, you need to complete the MAT, which is done a little bit early. I think that's done in November, December time before applying. There's no specific grade requirement for this, but they'll generally take into account your MAT score when they do your interviews and they assess your application. For an idea on how to actually attempt STEP and even the MAT, should be a course on screen that goes over what, what actually STEP is. So which course is right for you? Well, it really depends. It depends on what your interests lie in. In general, if you want that flexibility, I would say the maths course is great. It allows you to do a lot of pure maths, a lot of applied maths, a lot of statistics. But unless you're really wanting to go into something like philosophy or computer science, and you want that, that bridge between the two, then I would apply for those specific courses. Otherwise, the maths course is great. The only other reason I would apply for maths with physics is if I was really unsure about whether I wanted to do maths or physics. Um, but in general, the maths course has a lot of applied and physics modules in, and the physics course probably also has a lot of maths content in. So either will generally be okay for you. As a note, Cambridge doesn't offer a physics course, it's only the natural science courses, which means you need to do a lot of other courses as well. So let me know in the comments which one you're thinking of applying to and why. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'll be bringing out some new content on step questions and applications in general for maths courses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.